Now, no decisions have been made about the season for the SEC or the ACC. As you know, those conferences are home to the Bulldogs, Gators, and Seminoles. We continue our team coverage with On Your Side's Robert Bradfield, a busy man tonight. He's taking a look, closer look at what the impact canceling the season would have on college towns. Game days in Gainesville have been a time-honored tradition since 1999 for Bill Reichert when he opened Ballyhoo Bar and Grill just down the street from the swamp. We do big numbers on game days. People are in town, they're, in, they're having fun, they're spending money. This year, his sales slid. He was closed for six weeks because of the coronavirus. COVID-19 could also force the cancellation of the University of Florida's football season. Although no final decisions have been made, it's weighed heavy on those who see a business boost during home games. I know that things are really rough and, and you know, we're probably at about 50 percent of what we used to do. From restaurants to hotels and bed and breakfasts, a season's cancellation could mean that steady stream of revenue may turn into a small drip or nothing at all. Everybody who has a reservation this year will have a reservation no matter what weekend it is because I've blocked all my weekends from now until the end of the year. Cindy Montalto and her husband have owned the Magnolia Plantation Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville for nearly 30 years. The college football season is a big money maker for them. They were booked for the 2020 season by October of last year. See, if anybody calls me today and says I want to book for next October something, nope, I'm sorry, until the schedule comes out, we cannot book any rooms because my football people get first priority over a wedding night. It really is a wait and see approach. And the big question here is, will the season be punted into next year? Both business owners tell me whatever decision is made, they want the best health interest of the athletes put first. Robert Bradfield, First Coast News, on your side.